All right, now let's take a look at modes of speciation. And what speciation is, is the splitting of one uh, species into two or more species. And the first type of uh, speciation process that we're gonna look at is what is known as allopatric speciation. And allopatric speciation is a speciation that occurs as a result of a geographic barrier between populations that leads to reproductive isolation and genetic diversions, okay? So let's just break that down. So basically what we're saying here is we have two populations that are separated from each other and they can no longer interbreed with each other, all right? And so what's gonna happen with those different populations is mutations are gonna occur here that aren't going to occur here, the mutations are gonna occur here that aren't gonna occur there, and they're gonna also evolve to their local environments. And so even if this river were to go away and these populations were to intermingle again, uh, they would now be reproductively isolated from each other. All right, and so this is what we, uh, those two chipmunks I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, on either side of the Grand Canyon. So Harris antelope ground squirrel and the white-tailed antelope ground squirrel are these uh, species that are reproductively isolated from each other, uh, you know, because of the Grand Canyon in between. Now, there's other ways that this can occur. So say uh, some birds get flown off course there and then they uh, land on an island or insects, if you will. All right, and they're gonna evolve for that island, which will be different from the environment on that mainland. Uh, or, you know, they're getting separated by a mountain range. Uh, or one way that this can occur is that an intermediate population dies out and so this population could reproduce with that one, and this one could reproduce with that one, but now these two populations are too far apart to reproduce with each other anymore. So that's another way that this can occur. Now, one of the things that kind of works with this is what is known as adaptive radiation. And this is emergence of several species from a common ancestor that's introduced to a new and diverse environment. Now, this can occur after a mass extinction. So like when the dinosaurs died off, uh, mammals underwent an adaptive radiation after that uh, because there's all these habitats now open to them. Another is colonization events. So as I kind of mentioned, you know, flying to uh, a new island that doesn't have your species there. Or evolutionary innovation. So we have a lot of different kinds of insects uh, and uh, the development of wings has really led to a lot of that diversification because they could start moving to new environments. All right, so that's looking at allopatric speciation, so separations, right? So, oh, you know, and this is what we see on the Galapagos Islands, all the uh, Galapagos finches there, Darwin's finches, uh, and, you know, diversified from those mainland finches there. All right, so just more of them there. All right, next is sympatric speciation. So this is another way uh, that speciation occurs. This is a formation of a new species as a result of a genetic change that produces a reproductive barrier between the change population and a parental population. So, sympatric speciation is speciation that occurs without a reproductive barrier occurring, all right? This is kind of rare in animals because uh, these mutations that occur, uh, usually the animals don't survive, uh, but it is common in plants, all right? And this is due to polyploidy, something I mentioned earlier this semester. So polyploidy is where you have several sets of chromosomes, all right? So, you know, what happens here is that, you know, uh, if you make uh, um, a, uh, an egg, uh, or sorry, a gamete that is diploid, all right, so that's due to non-disjunction, making a diploid gamete, that's not gonna match up with a haploid gamete. So that usually doesn't work, and that's what this is trying to show. This will die in development. But if you have a diploid gamete that matches up with another diploid gamete, you can make a tetraploid offspring, all right? And that's what we're talking about here with sympatric speciation. And this is what we see with an auto polyploidy. And that's where all sets of chromosomes are from the same species, all right? But what this does, it essentially creates a new species that then can't backbreed with its parental species, all right? So, you know, almost in one generation here, we have a new species. And as I mentioned, 30% of all flowering plants are polypoids of some sort, all right? So that's one way that it occurs, all right? Another is by hybridization. So we get this hybrid individual and it can't reproduce with either one of its parental species, 
But what can happen with it is that non-disjunction mutation can occur uh, where it becomes, you know, uh, you know this polyploid uh, again. And then that hybrid individual can produce gametes, uh, and those gametes can come together uh, and then, uh, you know, produce that offspring. All right? So polyploid gamete, polyploid gamete, making that new individual. All right? So one of, uh, if we look at here, this is showing this with bread wheat. This has happened a few times to get us to bread wheat. Uh, so this was a, um, uh, a uh, domesticated uh, uh, wheat. It matched up with a wild wheat to produce this sterile hybrid. And then uh, a mutation occurred in there, and this gave us emmer wheat, also known as farrow. Uh, this bred with another wild wheat, and then we had a sterile hybrid. Now, you were, they were still making, uh, uh, planting these sterile hybrids because those sterile hybrids um, you know, produce larger seeds than uh, either of the parents. Uh, another uh, mutation occurred there, uh, and this led us to bread wheat that we use today.